Welcome to another video from the Voyager Middle School Steam Lab. This one is about how to make in Inkscape um, an image that can be used for printmaking. Uh, we're going to make this image by combining an image with some lines and some text to make a bold pattern for printmaking. Um, as with all the videos, d definitely if you're one of my students, you should be pausing this routinely and trying to finish what we what I have accomplished and backing up the video if you need to. So this is Inkscape. This is where we're going to do our work uh, to prepare it for the laser. We're going to laser engrave this and then use printmaking techniques to, to run it through a printing press and print it. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get an image. So I just went to the internet and I used an image search and it doesn't matter what image you use. What matters is that you have a nice simple background so you can eliminate I think that will probably make things easier. I like to use the snipping tool to move things. Um, and you can just create a new snip, drag around the image that you want. This is the point at which you need to think about your crop. Do you want it cropped so that it's flat on the top? Do you want to crop it in a little, a little bit closer for more impact? The white background is going to go away when I do my trace. Um, you got to be careful about catching little lines like that. If you catch a little line like that, you're going to have to remove it when you do when you get into Inkscape. So you can also see that when when you hover over things with Bing, um, it it highlights a face like that. So I want to start my snip not hovering over. So there, that's a pretty good snip. It automatically copies. I go back into Inkscape. I hit paste. Now I have the image. It doesn't really matter that it's low resolution because when I trace it, it's going to use the brightness and darkness to determine where I put it. It's going to smooth it out a little bit for me automatically. You know, dress the threshold to be what you want um, for your printmaking. So this is just a low res preview. But you can see, do you want to have this texture? How much do you want the facial features to show up? These are all choices that you're going to make artistically. When you're happy, you hit OK. Here, I'll move this over. You hit OK, and it does the tracing. You can't tell that it's done the tracing because you could theoretically trace a bunch of different things by selecting them and then doing them. Um, I have made my preview window bigger by dragging it like this. I like to hit update manually when I do the tracing. So now I've got a tracing. You can't tell until you move it over. This tracing is traced, and you can tell that because the fill is filled in here. Let me adjust my screen so that you can see the bottom edge. All right. So you can see that it's filled in black, but their stroke is unset. Okay, we're going to need to set that stroke to black for our laser because our laser will engrave with black stroke color. Um, I can do that right now by just holding shift and clicking. So now that will engrave. Don't need this image anymore, so I'm going to delete it. There are three elements we're going to use. One is the image, another one is lines, and, another, and the last one is text. So I've got this image. I've got a sheet of paper here to show you how big it would be on the sheet of paper. Don't have to do my work there, but if I do my work there, then the SVG will preview correctly um, if you put it into Google Classroom. I'm going to use some lines. I can use any of these shapes to draw my lines, or I can just use the straight line tool, the Bezier curve tool. I can draw straight lines by clicking and clicking one more time and then hitting enter on the keyboard to draw a straight line. I can draw a curved line by clicking and dragging to start a curve and clicking and dragging to continue the curve. And I can create curved lines that way too. Okay, so I can create a single line like that. I can draw multiple lines or what I can do also is I can duplicate these lines. So I can, I, if I right click on this line, I can choose duplicate. You can see it's control D on the keyboard. I can do that a few times. And then I can move one of them down. If I want to move it straight down, I hold control to move them straight down. And then if I want to select all of the lines I've duplicated like this, I can go to object and choose align and distribute. And then the align and distribute menu comes open and I can distribute my lines like this to create a pattern like so. I can also come in here on each line and go up to objects and choose fill and stroke. And I want to change the stroke width. Right now it's set to 0 0.265 millimeters, which is really small. But if I set it to like four, you can see it's a much bolder line. So you could do things like set the first couple to the same amount. Set them both to six. And then I'm going to set the next couple to four. You can also set the stroke by selecting the line right here and right clicking down here at the stroke width and just picking from the list. So I'm going to set some of these strokes to something a little bit thicker. 
Our laser will ignore the stroke width, however. So the laser doesn't see the stroke width, it only sees that there's a line there. But you can see you can create a pattern of lines pretty quickly that way. And with my pattern of lines that I have, what I can do is I can turn these into something the laser can see. So how do I check to see what the laser sees? If I go up to view, I can change the display mode to outline, and you can see that the laser just sees straight lines. But if I select one of these straight lines and I go from path and I choose stroke to path, it turns the stroke into a path. It basically draws a line around the outside of the object. So if I go back to normal display mode, nothing looks different. But if you look down here, the fill is set to black and the stroke is set to none on this particular object. Whereas this one, the stroke is set to black and there's no fill. So that's what I want to do for all my lines. If I want them to engrave properly on my laser, I'm going to select them. I'm going to choose object, stroke to path. I'm also, at this point, going to combine them into one object. That's going to allow me to do operations on the whole object. So now I can kind of see what it's going to look like. I can kind of place my lines and figure out how I'm going to use them with something like that. I can um, preview what this is going to look like. I can preview what it would look like if I got rid of the lines on the face by drawing a line around it. creating an object that's going to prevent that face. It said the stroke is set to black, but I'm going to set the fill to white by clicking on white. And then I'm going to move it down a layer by selecting it and using moving down a layer. See, you can see it's now underneath the, these lines. So I'm going to move the lines to the back. I'm going to move the face to the front. And that will show me what a preview of what it'll look like. However, if I go in again and I check on outline mode, it's a whole big mess, and so it's not going to engrave correctly, but we'll fix that in a minute. So this is just a preview of what I've made so far. I'm going to add some text by using the text tool. I'm going to click with the text tool. I'm going to type um, the text um, that I want to use, which I hadn't thought about before I started the video. So um, I might think about this ahead of time next time. <laughs> um, and... I can click on it once to rotate it. I can click on it again to resize it. This is a text object. So that means if I think better of the text that I want, maybe I don't, maybe it's not super obvious who this is and I, and I want to make it a little bit more artistic and not have it be quite so pop culture-y, I can come in here and I can actually change the text even though it's in this position here, right? And so I can change it to something else. I can also change the font. But because of that, the laser can't actually see this yet because it's not lines. So if I go into display mode outline again, you can see it's not showing up as lines correctly. So to make this show up as lines correctly, we have to choose object to path. Now it's lines. Now I can't retype it, but I could change it around like I could change around any sort of lines. All right. So now I've got all three elements. I've got the lines. I've got the text. I've got the image. So here we're going to put it together. So I'm going to go display mode normal again. I'm going to take this white object that is getting rid of these lines here, and I'm going to use it to actually get rid of the lines by selecting both objects. And then I'm going to go to path. These are the objects. These are the ways I can combine objects. This is the one I'm going to go for right here because you can see that the circle goes away. So that white object went away and it poked a hole in my lines. So if I go into uh, display mode outline, you can see the face is now clear of lines. But you can see the lines go into the hair, and I actually want to combine those so that the overlaps don't not engrave, which is what would happen right now. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to select the hair as well by holding shift and selecting both. And then this time I'm going to union them and get rid of the lines on the inside, like so. Okay. So now I'm going to put a crop on it. I want to turn this into a shape. Maybe I'll use an oval. How am I going to crop this down? So you can see I'm working in outline mode. You always have to be a little bit careful with that because it might not turn out quite the way you think when you switch it back to normal. But the outline mode is the mode the laser sees. So I'm going to just use this to trim these lines down by selecting the lines and the oval. And then up here, I'm going to leave only the part where they overlap. That's using intersection. And there's my f finished print. When I print it with on the paper, it's going to look like it will in normal mode. But in order to get that, I have to engrave this. When I engrave it, it actually makes it so this part won't pick up the ink. So to reverse my engraving, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw just a simple 
black line around it. But you can see that the fills turned in, fills colored in white, so I don't want that because I can't see my, what I'm doing now. So I'm gonna set the fill to none. What this black line will do is it'll engrave all the parts that are white and not engrave the parts that are black, which is what I want. The other thing I need to do is I need to duplicate this line and I'm gonna move it just ever so slightly in by choosing inset. So now I've got another line on the inside. I'm gonna shift that color to blue because blue means cut on my laser. So that'll cut out the object out of the larger sheet of plywood so that, that way I can ink this. The last thing I need to do is this will be spelled backwards and the image will be backwards because when I, when I use this as a printing block, I'm going to flip it over. So to flip the image, I select the image and I push flip. That's all I got to do, but you can see, oops, this part didn't flip because it's not combined. So I need to make sure I select both parts, hold shift, then push flip. There we go. So now here's my finished image. Um, I would save it twice. I'm going to save once. And I'm going to call it uh, what I want to call it. And I'm going to just hit save. It'll save as an Inkscape SVG. That way, if I ever want to make changes, I can come back to it. You could do that before you did all the combining up. That might be a good idea because that way you can adjust the lines, you can change the text, etc. cetera. Um, when you're ready to save it and send it to the, the, the laser like we are now, the laser that we have only likes DXF files. So you got to choose Desktop, Cutting, Plotter, AutoCAD, DXF. And you're going to save that. You're going to make sure your base unit is millimeters because that's what our printer, our laser cutter speaks. And then we are ready to print this image. Thanks. Hopefully that'll help you.